Well, I grew up in a very small town called Kamakura, which is about an hour outside of Tokyo. And so I was immersed in the old world, old Japan, very artisanal, without even knowing what that word is. They, they had this craftsmanship. That was the way people lived. You, you had to know how to work with your hands. And it was an awakening for me as a young child looking at the craftsman's work. And this was every day, going to school. All I had to do is turn my head and look into a shop, and there was an artisan sitting there. And that was the, the beauty of Japan back then. Today, it's different. It's totally different. You know, you have to go and look for the artisans. And if you could find people still trying to preserve the art, you appreciate it on a different level. But it's a lot harder and I hope we don't lose it. I'm not like a professional chef who's done some fabulous things and then they go and teach. It's not like I'm retiring from something to do this. I am doing this because I love engaging with people and I love to share food. In Japan, the function of the zakai is basically to blow off steam. Everybody in Japan works so hard. It's the one place they go. It's the tavern. I didn't build this to um, get people trashed or anything like that. I brought it to LA because I thought it was missing. Izakaya, the characters translate to stay, sake, place. So the word sake is right in there in izakaya. Um, and sake in Japanese doesn't mean sake, the rice beverage. It just means any kind of alcohol. For a Japanese, izakaya is therapeutic. And it should be that way for LA people too. And we need a therapy. Like we, we are under the stress to post this or do this and email of hundreds to go through it. So it's a pause. You pause your day stopping by to izakaya before you go back to your own realities. There weren't a lot of places to go and get an izakaya experience. We felt like, you know, Charles had been cooking French food. I had been working in American and Italian restaurants. And we traveled to Japan a lot, and we kind of fell back in love with Japanese food. Yeah, we missed having them around and thought, like, you know, that's something that we could maybe offer. I um, moved to Tokyo to spend one semester at a college there. It was kind of um, real immersion, just kind of thrown right into it. For chefs, it's not about I learned this cooking or I learned this seasoning. A lot of chefs learn the omotenashi with their experience, like real experience, and say, we want to bring that back to LA because we don't have that. Omotenashi is a Japanese word that really describes the culture of hospitality. A lot of it is about just really taking care of people, anticipating what someone might need before they even realize that they need it themselves. So when we're pouring sake by the glass, we use a small glass and then have a little saucer underneath that we allow sake to overflow into as we're pouring. It's a way to demonstrate generosity that we're saying, you know, we're going to give you so much that even the glass can't really contain it. The conversation, the atmosphere does not continue without a solid sake menu. It's generations and generations of taking this grain and making it into liquid form that provides community, that provides happiness, that provides union. And that's why sake is the Japanese culture in a cup, because it's just this wonderful accommodating beverage. And I think that's also an aspect of Japan as well, how we always want to make people hospitable, accommodated and warm and welcome. We care about what can I do to make others' life easier? Omotenashi is very addicting once you experience it.
What I'm trying to do is build a business where people are going to come in first and then introduce specials and things they haven't seen maybe or haven't tried. That's like my goal is to get people in the door and then just start doing more interesting things. Even the simpler dishes like chow mushi, almost all of it is from my mom. Like the sukiyaki we ate at home, the dumplings, fried chicken. We don't want to be a destination restaurant. We want it to be to be here for the neighbors. So we'll offer things like you know a glass of sake on tap for eight dollars. We're literally a block away from Dodger Stadium. Japan, baseball is like, they're in love. So we're like, you gotta do a Japanese dodge dog. Shishito relish, QP Japanese mayo, mustard, and then we add like a thousand Allen slaw, and we serve it with onion rings with seaweed. I think we're looking to offer a slightly more refined experience, but we're serving fried chicken, we're serving pork dumplings, gyoza. We want people to come in and drink beer and eat this food and have fun, but we want to also have food that you know tastes good and people feel good about eating and you know offers maybe a slightly different side of izakaya. And we just try to keep it as lighthearted and as, as easygoing as possible.僕はあの江戸時代から続くあの横瀬というあの日本の会社のあの七代目の長男として生まれたんですけれども日本では実家の魚屋に手伝って本当に毎朝市場に魚買いに行ってそれをレストランとかホテルにあの寿司屋さん
Sonoko is 100% obsessed with the buckwheat, and she knows it's not good enough to import buckwheat flour from Japan to make great soba noodle in LA because it's already milled long ago, and the fragrance of buckwheat goes away. The moment you grind it, it's same as coffee bean. You want to grind it right before you make a drip. And so I've actually been pursuing the farmers there to keep the buckwheat here, mill it to soba grade flour. We've been eating soba for you know, hundreds of years. It's a very popular noodle made with buckwheat. If you go to Japan, you will find artisan soba makers who use 100% buckwheat to make the noodles, and they're beautiful. I went to um, UCLA for graduate school after I finished my undergraduate at UC Davis. And I started working just as a, you know, secretary. The professor that I met, Lou Stuman, while I was working for him, I was cooking for him. And then he said, well, you cook really well. You should write a cookbook. And I said, I don't know how to write a cookbook. He says, well, I'll help you. The book was written 30 years ago based on the experience I had in my grandmother's kitchen in Japan, in Kamakura. Basically, the commandments that I still follow today, that I practice today, you know, good ingredients, eating food in moderation, creating contrast in your presentation. Um, so I've always been interested in education. My grandmother was a teacher, and she always had that sort of a teacher mode in the kitchen, too, and I always admire that. So, and you will see that the color is going to start changing. Not only she's a great teacher, but she is very, very, like, direct. No rubbing yet. Just tossing it and uh, scrape the sides. I don't want any dry spots. She doesn't candy coat to what she's thinking, so that makes her a great teacher. All right, keep going. Let me see. I'm actually born here, and I was yeah, trying to make really this my home. And yet, because of my name and the kind of food I, you know, I was cooking, I was kind of a foreigner. I wasn't American enough. I, I really wanted to um, celebrate my, my food heritage, so I just kept this going. I decided I would just keep cooking. So the next step is to turn this into a perfect disc. Preserving traditional technique is not easy in Japan and here too. But I think there is a really good shot for us to keep the tradition in LA because LA people are open-minded still. Turn it sideways and make a... Our cuisine is not very complicated, and that is what I am trying to share with my students. You've done this. You could do this with your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. I do a miso class. I also do pickles, all kinds of pickles, all kinds of noodles, right? Ramen, soba, and I teach dumplings. I teach a mochi class, and I teach seasonal menus. So, yeah, it's like there's just so many things you could teach. I could keep doing it for the rest of my life. <laughs> ロサンゼルスはまず気候が良かったのとやっぱり僕の水産業っていうのはすごい天候に左右されて。Can僕は輸入物は今のところ7割は輸入物をやってます。で、そのうちの3割は今ローカルものになって。それでもう一つの決め手はあのローカルのイエローテールっていうあの日本でいうあのまあブリヒラマサにあたる魚があの手に入るってい
and gift to Los Angeles because I know so many people know how to do ikejime in Japan, and that's the most critical and best way to bring the fish freshest to the table. But not everyone dreamed to come to here to introduce the technique. I think seafood was the weakest point of California until uh, Yogoda-san brought me the black god that was ikejime. あの、いけじめの魚をあの あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
the, the fat of the skin is more flavorful and it turns out more crispy and smokier. It's served with a little bit of grated radish mixed with shiso and some roasted mushrooms. Their mission is to teach Angelinos what they experienced good about Japanese culture and bring in the culture through food. You know, it's been really exciting for me to watch him progress as a chef and all of these amazing experiences and really grow. And when I eat the food, I can almost see kind of all the different influences in it. I just want to have a neighborhood restaurant. I want to make people happy. I enjoy coming into this restaurant because, you know, I, I built it. A lot of it is from my history of my life. I just want to have fun with it. I want people to enjoy it. I try to uh, learn English uh, every day, and I learn uh, the English and new vocabulary uh, from the conversation with chef. I wish yeah, I, I speak English uh, uh, more fluently in the future. I still learning um, it's a lot of things. If I can be really, really selfish, I would like his fish to be all mine. <laughs> but I want him to be successful. I want him to be successful for himself um, and for sustainability of the fish also. And I'm very proud that something that was done in Japan, the cultural thing that was in Japan, such as Ikejime, is now well known here in the United States and, and people are respecting it. And I'm very proud of it. And he's the ambassador for all that. 僕の基本的な土産ですの生活は今もう本当に仕事がメインで僕はあの魚のこのビジネスで成功した次の目標はあの教育の分野にあの僕はあの進んでいきたいなと思っていますそしてあの学校を作ってあの科学の研究をした
I want this restaurant to evolve and just keep getting better and keep getting more customers who are willing to eat more interesting things, things that are in Japan right now. You know, there's a cliche in hospitality that we're inviting people into our home, but it's a cliche for a reason because we do really feel that way, that we want people to come in and just really take care of them. It's hard to believe, but I've been in Los Angeles for more than 40 years now. So it's been a long time and I, I really see people are changing and they're open, they become really open. That's why it's just so wonderful to live in LA, especially because we're such a diversified place. Now this is so American, you know, you're, you're sharing culture here. To me, that is a very beautiful thing.